Hi, and welcome to the Lovelands podcast. My name is Dion Zara, just your average girl wishing to learn more about love and relationships. As a young girl, I always dreamt about my wedding day, and to be fair, I still do sometimes. With many couples around me, I quickly came to realise love isn't as straightforward as the movies make out. So I thought I'd have conversations with couples who made it past happily ever after to learn more about love. And when I say love, I don't mean like the movies and fairy tales, but I mean L-O-V-E, learning to be open, vulnerable, and empathetic. So if you're ready to learn, unlearn, and discover love through couples, you're in the right place. Hi, and welcome to the Love Learns podcast. This week is our final week of long distance relationships in this series, and we have my favorite and most wonderful couple ever um, coming on this week. <laughs> and they are my mum and dad, Benita and Frank Okoto. Let's welcome Benita and Frank Okoto. Hi guys. Thank you for having us. Hi. Hi, and thank Hello. you for inviting us. Um, as you can see, they're in two different spaces. Um, as we, we're talking about long distance. They're currently doing long distance at the moment. Um, my dad is in, where are you, dad? British Virgin Islands. Totola, British Virgin Islands. Whoop, whoop. And my mum is here in the UK with me. So she's downstairs and I'm upstairs. <laughs> um, so let's get started, guys. Um, how did you guys meet? Let's start there. Uh, it's a long story, but I'll cut it short. Uh, sometime in uh, 1977, uh, I, I think it was in September, a friend of mine, uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, whose girlfriend was your mom's uh, friend, uh, decided to visit uh, them at the, uh, at the school, uh, secondary school they attended, which was about an hour's drive away from where we were. So for, just for the sake of the ride, I just jumped into the car and we went. So when we got there, I mean, they had, uh, they started, uh, they accepted us. Uh, I mean, we got introduced to uh, my friends, girlfriends, friends, you know, mutual friends. So uh, we, they ended up giving us uh, their album, photo albums as a sort of, uh, to keep me occupied while they chatted. So I was looking through these albums and uh, I saw one young, beautiful lady. And I said, okay, this is very, she's very interesting. But uh, I didn't make any comment then to my friend. So when we came back to where we were, I just started, I discussed it with him that, oh, this young lady is quite beautiful. beautiful and I would uh, like to know uh, more. And my friend decided that, okay, uh, I mean, you see what you could do, but that was the end of it. I didn't hear much about it till uh, Christmas, just before Christmas, he decided to send his girlfriend a, a, a Christmas card. I was with him then, so I also decided to buy a Christmas card and send it to your mom because we hadn't heard from each other since we met in September. When, when we got, uh, I mean, the Christmas card was not acknowledged I don't know whether she received it or not, but it was not acknowledged. But somehow in, the full, uh, in January 78, my dad passed and uh, your mom and her friend were in town for something else. So they decided to come and offer their condolences to me. So I, I really, I, actually I appreciate it and uh, appreciated it and uh, thank them for uh, taking the time off to uh, offer me their condolences. That was nice of them, but we got the opportunity to chat a little bit more, you know, and that is how it all started. Very, very yeah. good. Very good. Okay. So mom, how did you, um, how was your impression of dad when you first met in September? Oh, right. Okay. When we met in September, it's like, to be honest with you, I did not pay much attention to him because it was like, they were not there. They were not there for me. They were not there because of me, actually. I was just giving my friend the support and it's like, as if we were in a boarding school, 
So if, if your friend get visitors, it's up to you know the her friends to entertain whoever has come. And uh, as he said, it was the, the two of them. There were two. So, and it's like, he also needed someone just to give my friend and the boyfriend the space, you know. So someone had to be there. So I did not, seriously at that time, I did not see it to be something that, you know, you have to, um, and something that was on my mind that, oh, okay, it's like, he's a nice guy. Da, 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 da. Yes, I saw him to be a nice person, you know, handsome person, but I wasn't. That was not what was on my mind. So it was like an open, like, um, open conversation, try to make conversation, try to, you know, um, yes. entertain, entertain him, you know, for him not to be bored, mm -hmm. you know. So that's how it started. So it wasn't, I wouldn't say that at that time I had, you know, any, I did not have any interest. That was not what was on my mind, to be honest. So it was just friendship. Okay. It was just friendship. Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, so when did it transition from friendship to you guys being together? Um when did it when did they start i think it was after after as he said after we went to see him when he sadly lost his dad and then we went to see him that's when you know um and then it wasn't so at, at that time it wasn't just a first time anymore we've seen each other like another time so it was i think from there and then i had then received a christmas card from him as well so things were it had started building up gradually i would say you understand so yeah so i think it's after we i saw him for the second time that's when yeah that, that's when it started building up that then it's it became like it's not just um it's not just friendship it's you can see that it's heading you know towards something like, sorry. Uh, sorry so all these something was serious Yes. Yeah, it was, yes. Yeah, it, it was uh, because uh, I mean we had a we had the time to uh, actually chat, you know, because uh, I was not um, in a relationship then. So it's it was uh, uh, I was looking then. I realized, although initially I was not looking, but it was like God had answered my prayers, you know. So let's see what this lady can uh, offer to me, you know. So. I, I was sort of pushing. So f fortunately, she also expressed some in interest. And uh, that was how it started. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So what were your first impressions of like after everything had, um, you guys had started dating? When, when did you realize, oh, actually this, this is going somewhere and it's going, it's like, we can make this work. How, how did it go from, you guys being friends to, okay, we have interest here, to you guys actually being in a formal relationship? Yeah, um, because uh, I, I had, uh, you know, the nature of my work required me to travel a lot. So when I, um, I kept bombarding her with, um, with letters, you know, and uh, I had expressed interest and she was, uh, she was also replying to my letters. And like I said, I was pushing, you know, because uh, I had uh, developed a lot of interest in it based on uh, the communication we, had, we were having, you know. So that was how um, uh, the, the relationship built up, you know. Yeah. And you knew she was the one? Yes, she was the one. <laughs> and Mommy, how did you know that Daddy was the one? um it, it, it's it's like yeah when we started communicating like through letters with with each other with me with me he he's with him he was he was you know it was okay for him because um he had no one you know he was single at that time i wouldn't say i wasn't single but it's like like you know school life back home in, at, in school we like and in boarding school you become, you know, friends with, and it was a mixed school. It was boys and girls. It was a mixed school. 
So it's like people had, yes, people had expressed interest in me, but it was just expressing interest. And um, I wasn't, I did not, I did not respond to their, um, I did not advances. respond to them easily. Sorry, what did you say? Uh, the advances. Yes, really? yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. That's the way. I did not respond to that. So that is the reason why when he came, when we started building this up, I tried to, um, I tried and kept a bit of a distance, you know, but in the end, I realized that, you know what, he is the right person for you. Just, just, you know, forget about all those that have, you know, that was, that, that tried, that showed interest, that were making advances at you, forget about them and that. So, yeah. And there were so many things about him that you know attracted me to, and that made made it easy for me to make that decision. You know, first it's like they are, I was I was quite young, but then again, I don't know. I was I had a very matured mind. I did. I knew what I wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, as some of the things like example, like um, you always do not. I always had to think twice before getting close to someone. Also, it's like if you're going to get close to someone, then you have to be, I, to me, I have to be sure that that person is not someone that would be like double timing you or anything of that sort. You know, more or less like I, I'm, I wasn't prepared for anyone to take me for a ride. So that, that made me like a very, um, even though young, but very, um, um, I wouldn't say matured, young, but straight in as to, or disciplined as to the certain things that I want in life. And it's like, yeah, I saw, I saw that, yeah, he's someone that, you know, um, he can, he's someone, he, he's someone that can, apart from how, how apart from his looks, um, yeah, yeah, that, that, that was like the icing on the cake. Like, yes, this is what you want. That's, mm -hmm. that's all that you've been looking for. And it's right in front of you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I remember one of the things she commend, commended me on, that uh, one, this, one of the traits I had, which she was impressed with, was that Whenever I was eating, I never made noise, you know. I said, oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> I didn't make any noise while, while eating. So that was, uh, she, it was something she hated. So once she realized that I, I was not doing that, she said, okay, this guy is, uh, this, and I picked it up from my grandma who would just hit your mouth whenever uh, you started making noise with your mouth when you eat, you know. So that was a good thing my grandma did for me. Simple <laughs> <laughs> manners. Yes, 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 yes. That's good. So, so mommy was looking for good character and the looks just added on to that. And daddy, you saw a good thing and you went after it, which is amazing. Um, so when did you guys officially start the long distance relationship? Oh, like I said earlier, we have uh, the nature of my job required me to do a lot of traveling, you know, and uh, I mean, she, we had discussed it and she knew what she was um, uh, getting herself into. And uh, I, one of the traits she had, which I, I still admire, is that she's always focused. She, uh, while uh, I was away, she was attending school, she was working, and she kept herself busy. So um, she, and uh, we used to communicate a lot, you know, wherever I was, I would call uh, the, uh, and whenever I got the opportunity. And talking about communication, those days uh, there were no mobile phones or, uh, I mean, uh, we had to, we had to communicate with, um, by going, I had to go to maybe a telecom office or um, what, they had something with the, 
a communication center in all the places that I, I, I went just to get uh, make a phone call. And uh, it was it was uh, challenging, but uh, I made it my uh, a point to always be in touch with her. I mean, find out how she was doing, and uh, we discussed uh, things over the phone, you know. And when I came, uh, whenever I came back home, she was. I mean, we spent a good time together, so it was a, a, a good uh, arrangement we had. Yeah, talking about communication, I remember, uh, let me put this in so, so that we could uh, uh, laugh it off. I once had a very short time to make, uh, to go and make the uh, call her on the phone. I went out and I was in a rush, you know. I think it was in uh, somewhere in India or so. So I, as I was going, I was being harassed by this beggar, you know. Then uh, I got there, and uh, the, uh, the beggar followed me right to the this guy. I was ignoring him, and he was uh, I was headed for that communication center. I got there, and uh, when I got there, uh, the I couldn't get through. I mean, somehow I couldn't get through. So I was upset when I was coming back. When I was coming out, the beggar was still there waiting for me. So when <laughs> he said. Oh, uh, he, still, he just kept following me. So he just stood right in front of me. So I shoved him out of, you know, and uh, he stopped following me. And I felt so bad doing that, you know, but it was my mental state, you know. And uh, with the communication to what I really, this brings up uh, the issue of uh, wherever I went, I had to consider the time zone difference. You know, because uh, it could be night over where I am, but still morning. Uh, maybe she may be, still be asleep, you know, so I can't call. You know, it, it was it was challenging, but uh, we were able to overcome that. And uh, we were able to get in touch with each other at, the, uh, or at any opportunity we had. Yeah. Yeah. So with communication with you guys did was it um you weren't speaking to each other every day were you it was kind of in drips and drabs um uh, yeah. yeah whenever we had the opportunity yes yeah yeah it's like maybe it's because of the nature of your dad's work um at that time he he uh, by profession he's a merchant navy officer so if he says he traveled, um, he was traveling, not only where we were, in the country where we were, that what we were in Ghana then, but he used to travel outside Ghana, you know. So as to um, communicating, like as like being able to, you know, um, speak to each other like every day or um, that was out of the question. We could not do that. He couldn't be going to like, at times it took them about, over a week before they could arrive at a port or something where they, he could have access to, you know, telephone for him to call me. So it wasn't that it wasn't that regular. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that regular. The only thing that I would say that was regular was like, oh, if you feel like, if you feel like, like if you miss him or if if you feel like doing something to, you know, occupy your time, then you can write because just put that on paper and then post it. But as to if you know we were we were going to be calling each other, or if I was expecting him to be calling all the time, no, that was that was not something that was um, that I, I could have had easily. It wasn't that easy because in the eighties things were not you know 70s, 80s, things were not um, as it is now. Technology wasn't that advanced, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, but it it it's like. That is what, that's what I knew, you know, because he, he goes and comes. So it wasn't, we didn't start our relationship of like, we were meeting every day at this time. Oh, he will go to work after work. He will come and see you, let's say for about 30 minutes, one hour, and then he will go every weekend. You can spend time with him. You know, no, it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that. We started off with a long, distance you know relationship that's how we started it off so it's like we we kept ourselves busy with other things 
when he's around, when he gets the chance, the opportunity to, you know, um, call me, that's all well and good. If I haven't heard from him, I'm fine. I'm fine. So that's how it, it was. And that is how, you know, I, I would even say that now it's still, you know, we, we, that's how it is. That's how it is. But, but with the, the advent of uh, mobile phones and uh, internet and all that, we are almost always, I mean, sometimes we call two, three times a day, each other, two, three times a day, you know, so uh, communication has improved with uh, technology. So that's a good thing. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. So obviously communication back in the day was a little bit of a hurdle. Um, an obstacle for you guys to overcome. Were there any other obstacles that you overcame when you were doing long distance back in the day or even now? Um, yes, yes, there was a lot. There was a lot of um, challenges, you know. Um, <clears throat> sorry. As, as, we, we, as, we, as we grew older, you know, and then that relationship also, you know, did turn into from friendship to like um, couples. Mm -hmm. You understand that was still there. Those challenges, if if it had not um, increased, I would have said, I would say that um, it never went away. Mm -hmm. The communication was like, it was a key one. It was a key thing in the relationship but then again there were other challenges it's like we were no longer like um friends but we've now we become a couple and you cannot say that you are now a couple so um he has to put his life on hold because you are a couple and then stay with you that wouldn't work it's like when i met him he was someone that was working that well that was one of the boxes that i think every woman or most women want security. Mm -hmm. So you need someone that you are going to spend the rest of your life with. That is fine. But then again, you will need someone that, well, you are a woman, someone that can take care of you. You understand? Yeah. So it's like, I could not say that, oh, um, now we are married, now we are a couple. So, um, Will you consider, you know, changing your profession, changing your job so that we can spend more time together? No, that would have been, I would have been, I, I, well, I see it to be that I would have been selfish because he never, when I, when I met him, that's how he was. That was the work that he was doing. So why are you asking him now to, you know, um, to quit his job or look for a different job? That would not, that wouldn't have been fair. But with that comes, and I say, I, I will say that yes. So I was okay with that, but not fully okay with it because um, as we grew older, we decided we need we need to start family, our family. That was one of the things that was you know on the agenda for us. We knew what we wanted and how you know we were facing ourselves. And because of um, the relationship being a long distance one. He comes and he goes. So um, unfortunately, it wasn't. Um, I, it became a problem when um, when I started, you know, miscarrying. Getting pregnant wasn't difficult for us. We can get pregnant, okay. But for my body to, I think I would say that for my body to to hold the pregnancy, we didn't know that. I was going to have a problem with that. So that became the main challenge at that time. Mm. That became the main challenge. But gradually, gradually, um, we, 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 we had people that came into our life like doctors that were able to help us address the issue. And then um, after a few, uh, some like, I had like three miscarriages. After that, they were able to, you know, help. So um, that we 
we were able to, you know, overcome that hurdle. And I was able to, you know, carry um, a pregnancy to full time. So that was that. So it's like, it's every stage and what it comes with. You understand? Every stage, you start with communication. Not, you will not be able to see the person as often that you have to see the person. That was fine. We were okay with that. And then you move on in life. Then it, something else will come up. But all of that, all of that, I think what you need to bear in mind that is life, life itself is not, it's not that easy. You're going to be facing challenges, whether it's a long distance relationship or a short distance relationship. There are always going to be challenges in life. So it depends on how you, you, you address your challenges. It's a mindset. So yeah. with me, with me, every time, you know, I face a challenge, I have to decide whether I want to overcome the challenge or let go. It's, it's a mindset. So when I put my mind to it, just like from the beginning, I did put my mind to it, the father, this is the type of job that he does. I'm not going to let that, you know, uh, interfere with the love that I have for him. I did put that right in my mind, boom. That is not going to be an obstacle. And it wasn't. So when I started having miscarriages, I did put in my mind that, you know what, there must be a solution to it. So do not give up. Just keep on, you know, keep on looking for a solution and you get a solution. Yes. And by the grace of God, he brought, God brought someone in our life that helped us to over, overcome that challenge. So it's, it, is, it is a mindset and it is like um, being patient. Being patient. Be it long distance, short distance. If that is what you want, be patient. Yeah. You know, and I'm yeah. sure that I'm sure that at the end of the day, um, you will you will be smiling because things will start, you know, falling into place. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So so yes, there they, they, they are challenges with long distance relationship, but there can still be those those challenges with short distance relationship. It mm -hmm. it can still be there. It can still be there. It all depends on how uh, how um, how you decide to resolve it or how do you decide to handle it so with me yeah. that's that is what you know that that's what kept me um kept me going uh at the last count if i'm right we have been together for 43 years now that's right and uh we we have we have <laughs> we have been uh we have faced uh, a lot of obstacles, like your mom said. We, um, we, I think David was born in '89. That means you can just calculate and see how um, long it took for us after your mom's miscarriages and all that. How what we went through, and by the grace of God, how everything settled in the end. But you know, God prepares us for these things. We. Uh, see things as setbacks. Meanwhile, God has his own plan. So uh, while um, we were uh, while we were waiting for our first um, child, I mean, we were able to uh, focus our lives, you know. We didn't focus entirely on that. We were able to uh, move on with our lives and just uh, hope for the best, thinking that God would uh, eventually uh, carry us through, and he did, you know. So uh, we are grateful for that. So I, I, for anyone watching this, I would say that uh, just be patient, uh, look, look to God and yeah. pray, but don't don't just relax and say that, oh, I'm waiting for God. You have to make the first move, you know, and God will just uh, push you on. That is the way I see it. And That's that true. has been our mantra, that, okay, God is there, but uh, we will also have to um give our input 
and God will uh, God will point us in the direction, and we have to make the step to uh, do whatever we want to do. And you assist us. You pick it, we can pick it back on God to get to where we want to go. So that is the way we have always looked at it. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And um, I don't think you guys said which which year did you guys get married? Oh. oh. We we uh, we met in seventy seven. We did the traditional marriage in 79 and put pen to paper on, in 89, 87, sorry, 87. 87, yeah. Then they, uh, yeah, 87, yeah, 87. November, 28 November, 28 November, 87. Yeah, but, but, but mind you, mind you, um, where we come from in Ghana, or not only in Ghana, it's like at the time that we got married, the traditional marriage was termed as like common law marriage and it was recognized everywhere, especially in the United Kingdom, it was well recognized. If you have a common law marriage, they term it to be, you are married, you know, yeah. So um, at that time, you, you, there, wasn't the, um, there wasn't the agency for you to, you know, um, to, to register your marriage or, um, whatever because that was our um that was our traditional marriage and that was according to our culture that means you are you are fully married okay beautiful beautiful so you guys have spoken about common um you guys having a traditional marriage um so in the traditional marriage your families would have been there so how did your families even meet before the tradition or did they meet before the tradition or was it on the day that they met each other, how would how did your families meet? Um, well, uh, yeah, go on, go on. Okay, okay. How did our fa we? I I don't think um, you know it's not it's because they were we were they were both families were not living in the same town in the same place, you know, so it was difficult for them to meet. That wasn't going to happen. The only time that um, it will happen, and according to our culture, um, me especially, my parents will not make the right, they will not make the first move. To, no, you do not officially um, see them, or they will not officially go and see each other until they are very sure that the relationship is going to like escalate, go, move on, you understand, move to another stage that then they will come in. If not, it's like, I remember, um, I told my mom when I first met your dad that um, I realized that it wasn't only then at that time, it wasn't only friendship. I told, I told you that, I told my mom, sorry, I got distracted there. I told my mom that about him, not my dad. I was closer to my mom, not my dad about him and then at that time he was awake i see i mean he was awake so when he came back like he was going like every three months then he'll be back to ghana so when he came back i didn't know he was back so before i realized um he was he, he had come to where i was you know um that they arrived the previous day so he came the following morning to come and look for me but because I had then told my mom about him, that this this person is the he's now in my life, and I think it's going to go, you know, it's it, it's it's not going to be just friendship. And so my mom was also she was also eager to see him. So when he came, I introduced him to my mom, but I didn't go. I didn't introduce him to my dad. I introduced him to my mom. We sat together. We we did chat. We had something to eat. And then he went back. It was like an hour drive or an hour and a half drive back to where he was. So that was how it was. It's like, um, officially, we do not, the parents will not meet till, um, till the um, traditional stuff started. Like you being serious and then you um, telling him uh, me no no I think I'll leave that for him to tell you he will he will um, me telling my parents that this and this person is 
in my life now. And that that's what I did. And then, um, yeah, so they did not meet till it became official that, you know, um, it's heading towards, the friendship was heading towards marriage. So I, yeah, prepared, like I prepared, I prepared my mom and I think my mom did tell my dad. So my dad, he wasn't the known in a way that there's something like this going to happen or happening. So when, um, so when they came to see them, when it was time for them to come and they came to see it. No, I think he came, he came and I, at the stage I introduced him to my dad before it became official, I introduced him to my dad. Yeah, yeah. But it yeah, wasn't the, the first time he, you came back. No, I introduced exactly. him to my dad. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The, the first time, the first time I arrived uh, in Ghana, quite late, you know, and I was eager to see her. So the following morning, uh, I decided to uh, drive down to where she was, about an, just over an hour's drive away from where I was, and it was uh, morning. So I. I uh, was uh, like I, I said before, communication was difficult. So I didn't even, I couldn't even uh, prompt her that I'm on my way coming. So she was there when I popped up. I said, I arrived. I said, hey, how are you doing? But I, I got the opportunity to meet her mom, my mother in law, and God bless her. So she was uh, very, I mean, welcoming. And I mean, it's like, the conversation flowed, you know, it's like she was happy to see me. And, you know, in, a, in such a stage, in a, in a, uh, in a stage of uh, that relationship, you know, you will realize that, okay, I'm welcome here. So even if I had bad intentions, you know, that would have changed my mind, but I didn't have bad intentions. I knew what I wanted. I was going for what I wanted. So that <laughs> was, uh, like your mom said, a tick in the box. You know, so it was uh, very, uh, uh, I mean, it helped, it sort of encouraged me to uh, uh, keep the relationship to the best that I could give, you know. So um, I couldn't see the dad that day because he was away at work. And the uh, following time I went back, I, uh, I think the dad had been prompted. So uh, got the opportunity to see the dad as well. And he was also welcoming, although he was a bit reserved, you know, he was uh, welcoming. And I also, uh, I started warming up to the, uh, to the family too, you know, so it was, it was a good thing. It was a good thing. Yeah. The relationship has built up over the years. And moreover, um, since I said, my dad died in, uh, passed away in 78, God bless him. So he was, um, uh, I had my father-in-law to look to as a father figure. So the relationship uh, built up and he was always there for me, you know? So, I mean, I've been very, very close to the family. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And mom, how did you meet grandma? Obviously. Um, yes, uh, um, uh, my mother-in-law, my late mother-in-law. It's, um, yeah, I think, I think it was when, um, when you, um, when he start sadly passed and then me and my friend went to see him. That was the first day that, you know, I saw, I think I saw most of the, most of my in-laws. They were, they, they were all living together in the house. So that was the first time. I don't think I saw my mother-in-law then. But I saw my sister-in-laws and then my brother-in-laws. I saw most of them. He introduced us to all of them, you know. And um, yeah, but my mother-in-law, to be honest, I can't even quite remember the first time I saw her. Um, I think, I think, um, I, I can't, I cannot remember that. I cannot remember that because she made it very easy for me when I saw her. She made it, if it was difficult, I would have remembered, but she made it very easy. So I can't even <laughs> remember, honestly. She was so, so welcoming. And mm -hmm. she is someone that has very soft way of speaking, very, very calm and soft, you know? So, and, and it's, it's like, I think, I don't know if they were expecting, if they were, 
the, I think the first time I saw her, I don't know if she was already expecting me, but I, yeah, I, I went there unannounced. Yeah, I went there unannounced. But when she saw me, yeah, I remember, now I'm remembering it. But when she saw me, um, this woman used to run a clinic, a maternity clinic. So I think she was there, she was there at work. So when I entered the house, she was the, uh, she was the first person I saw and she said hello. And I like the way she said the hello is like, she, she was asking that, um, are you looking for someone more or less? And I'm like, yeah. Um, and I went with my friend, Jemima as well. And then, and I think she knew Jemima. So when she said hello, and then um, she looked at Jemima and then she recognized who she was. So I said, yeah. So before I said, oh, I'm looking for Frank, she had said, oh, he's upstairs, you know? Mm -hmm. So I went, we went upstairs and then we saw, um, we saw your dad. And then he brought us down later to introduce me to his mom. Yeah, yeah. So that was, that was, that was how I met her. And she, she asked how I was doing and, you know, she tried to make conversation. She tried to make conversation and yeah, that was, that was a nice experience. If it was, as I said, if it was um, a tough one, I would have remembered, but it wasn't, it was the way I thought it was going to be, it was easier than that. Yeah. So good, so good. Honestly, I think, yeah, um, parents-in-law, sometimes it can be a bit tricky. Um, and it sounds like you guys both had a really good um, welcoming from both sides, which is good. Um, but how did your marriage, um, did you have any expectations with when you were going into your marriage? Um, yes, yes. Um, as I said, I think I've said, I have said that already. It's like with me, when I was going into it, I was... I have in my mind that he, sh he should be someone that, you know, I can spend the rest of my life with. And yes, and I wanted a family as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, my expectation, let me just, my expectation was like um, to have a family, to be in the position to, to give the children that we were going to have a better life, you understand, and to be very supportive to my husband in any way that I could. Yeah, so that was that was my expectations. Well, I, I entered this uh, relationship thinking that, okay, um, I'm ready, I'm young and ready to marry. I'm working, so why not start early? Uh, and now just uh, uh, have up my family and live happily ever after. But uh, like I said, fortunately, I had a very, very supportive woman to uh, spend my life with. And uh, she has been focused and I mean, beyond my expectation that uh, we have, uh, we, we have been able to talk about things, uh, I mean, whatever um, we think of uh, each other. We may not always agree, but we have, at this stage, we have learned to agree to disagree. That's you know, right. Because, uh, because uh, uh, when you stay together for this long, before you ask a question, you know <laughs> the answer, or you have an idea of the answer. You know? <laughs> so, so it is a very, um, I mean, very interesting. But uh, fortunately, if you have a, someone with a, mm -hmm. uh, a good sense of humor, I mean, you could laugh over things even when things are not uh, going on like it should, you know. You just uh, take the fun out of it and just keep focused to get things right, you know. But we don't, uh, we don't, we have learned not to uh, let things bring us down, you know. I always say that God put the eyes in front of us for a reason, so that we always look forward. We don't look back. And uh, our, my expectations have been, I mean, well uh, exceeded. You know, uh, I mean, we we have uh, been able to work as a team to reach where we are now, and that's all due to God's blessings. Yeah. yeah. Amazing, yeah. amazing. I'm with you on that. Um. Mm -hmm. 
you guys have given really lots of advice already, but if you were to advise someone who's going through long distance at the moment, um, what would you advise them? Um, if someone is going through a long distance relationship, um, what I'll say is just take it like any other relationship, you have to be patient. And then you, you will have to communicate. That is a very key thing in life. Every relationship depends on if you, if you, if you are going to um, achieve your aim or the purpose of going into that relationship, I think communication is one of the key points. Then you need to communicate with the person that will come into your life. Do not let the long distance hinder the way you feel about the person. No, because you, you, need, you need to, if it comes to love, to be honest with you, if you love someone, as they say, love conquers all. Being it a long distance, a short distance, mm -mm. when it comes to love, long distance becomes short to you because you love the person. You understand? And the moment, the moment that love or the moment you realize how much you love the person, all of that Everything else becomes like a secondary matter. Long distance, short distance. It's 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 nothing to you. You will yes, at times you will you will wish that the person is closer to you. Yes, but do not let that do not let that um, take over your life because the person is not closer to you. Now it's like communication. It has become very easy now. You can communicate with someone. You can you can even see someone whilst you are you are speaking with a person. So do not let that hinder a relationship that you have with a person. Give it a go. Give it a go wholeheartedly and see how it yeah. goes. You see how it yeah. goes. Because I have a feeling um, God have a purpose for everyone. If he brings someone in your life and the person is closer to you, he's going to make a way for you. If you bring someone in your life and the person lives a way, well, it lives really, um, and it's, it is a long distance relationship, he will make a way for you. He will make a way for you. It's just for you to, you know, tap into it, communicate, communicate with the person. Always be open okay. with the person. Don't, don't, don't keep things from the person. Just tell, it's not always that you are going to be, you know, not because I'm saying that. So you think, you know, I should always, I should always be positive. I should, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's a roller coaster. At times you will, you, you'll be okay with the father. Okay, the person is that far away from me. At times um, it will get to you in a way, but you overcome it. And I think your mindset also plays a role. You overcome it. So I think long, long distance, short distance, you have to be open. You have to be, you have to communicate more. And then you have to keep on loving the person. Even though the person is miles and miles away, just keep on loving the person. Keep on expressing your love to the person just like he was just by you and you tell the person all the time. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. And then yeah. you have to, 
you have to compromise in every relationship, being it like a relationship, a group of friends, a group of what you need to compromise. You can't always have your way. You need to compromise. Yeah, Mr. Akoto. Can I take over? Over to you. Yeah. Okay. 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 The, talking about uh, compromise, I think one of the things that makes um, uh, long distance relationships work is empathy. You know, you have to feel for the other person. You have a. Uh, uh, you have to uh, say, what if, if I were in that person's shoes. Mm -hmm. What would that? Uh, what? How would that person feel? You know. So you do th things to uh, by considering what uh, that, how it will affect your partner. You know, and that is very very important because you can't just make random statements and expect it to be uh, 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 which you know it's hurtful and expect it to just ride. You know, it, 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 it with someone you love, you have to keep try to keep that person happy, you know. And having said that, do you, uh, uh, Benita just um, uh, touched on uh, honesty. And honesty should be there, as so is trust. You have to trust mm -hmm. that that person has your well-being at heart, yeah. you know. If you have any issues, you discuss with that person, you communicate, like we've been saying, communicate, communicate, communicate. That person has your uh, um, uh, interest at heart. So mm -hmm. you um, you trust that person to deliver and you, you uh, play your part in that exchange of trust, you know? And that will also come with uh, patience. You have to be patient. Not, Rome was not built in a day, but sometimes things get delayed. Uh, you have to, uh, wait for things, and uh, sometimes your fault, sometimes not your fault. But uh, patience is a virtue that would uh, do well in a long distance relationship, you know. So, that is uh, one, uh, some of the things that uh, I would uh, uh, advocate in this long, long distance relationship, you know, uh, trust, patience, empathy, communication. I mean, they all do well to keep the uh, relationship going and not only going, improving the relationship. Eh? That's right. Expression yeah. of love. Expression of love. I mean, it's it, 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 sometimes difficult, but you there's uh, nothing is impossible. If you say impossible, you just uh, separate the M from the P and I put an apostrophe between the I and the M and you get I am possible. You know, mm -hmm. then you, you you look for you look for um, you, you look for the way ahead. You know, because every reason, every situation, or every obstacle has a solution. You only have to look for it and just crack on. You know, so that is the way I see things. And and if I can add something um, and one more point, it's like if you are if you are going through a long distance relationship. Another thing that can help you is like, there is the possibility, there is the possibility that you'll be going through that for a short time. It could be a bit longer, but at the end of the day, it's most likely it's not going to be long distance relationship forever. You understand? So you, I think you will, what kept me going was like, um, I knew, that sooner or later we'll be together. Sooner or later we'll be together. So I think if you have that, always see the positive side of it. Do not let the negative side overshadow the positive too much. You understand? Always, always have in mind that, you know what? Sooner or later, the reason why we are apart, we are not going to be apart anymore. We are going to be together. And if you have that, it will keep you going. It will keep you, you always look up to something nice going to happen. So that's my, that's another advice that I would like to give people that will be going through that. Always look at, look at the, 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 uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. It is definitely going to come. You will see it. It will happen. 
you know, so whatever you'll be going through at that time, just think about how you love the person and how when everything, you know, comes to an end, how you are going to spend the rest of your lives together, you know, without any distance going to be between you. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. at, the, at, the, at the end of the day, you have a companion for life. That's, That's right. That's right. That's right. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Thank you so much, guys, for coming on to the show. Um, we're coming to the end of the episode. So the final question for you guys is, what have you learned about being open, vulnerable, and empathetic in your relationship? What have I learned? Um, I would say that um, that's made me know that something about myself that, you know, I did not know. I, uh, it's made me know that um, I'm someone who is, <clears throat> sorry, uh, I am a bit, not a bit, I am impatient. I'm someone who is impatient. It's like, if I want, if I want, you know, if things, it's like, uh, I want it, I want it. But this has helped me. I'm still learning, trying to, you know, um, overcome my impatience. But yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I think I am open. I am open and I always, I always, as your, as your dad said, I always um, think about him, put myself in his shoes mm -hmm. sometimes. And then, um, and that also helps in like certain decisions that I, I have to make. Well, 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 well. Um, we, I, I have certainly learned a lot from this uh, relationship, you know, being away, being with the family for some time. And I mean, it, it, life is a, a continuous journey, you know, of knowledge. You know, you learn, you pick things up as you go along. Uh, you, uh, you make decisions based on what you have gone through, your past knowledge or some wisdom or someone's experience. These are all uh, uh, part of the learning curve, you know. So um, with this uh, relationship that uh, this 43 years short relationship, it looks like yesterday, you know. Yeah, I know. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, there's 43 years together. Uh, it looks like we have been able to understand each other, you know, uh, like uh, be on the same wavelength of most issues. I'll say most, not all, because sometimes mm. we, we disagree, you know. So we be on uh, the, uh, this, we have patience for each other. That I, I can attest to that because uh, your mom always, uh, I mean, I've not been, uh, sometimes I do things that you say, how can you do that? How can you say that? I say, okay, okay, okay. I learn from it, you know, then I correct myself. It's, it's, uh, we learn from each other. And I believe she has also learned uh, quite a few things from me. And uh, it's the give and take makes it uh, more interesting, you know, in a, it makes the relationship more interesting. And uh, you know that, okay, someone, has your back, so to say. It, it's, uh, someone will be there when you mess up and uh, to, someone will be there to pick you up. And uh, you know that if that person also messes up, you are there to pick them up. That is uh, a relationship that is uh, um, going places, you know, because uh, you understand each other. And by God's guidance and God's grace, uh, you, the step is one, uh, one at a time, but uh, eventually get there. Yeah. So that's my take on it. The empathy, empathy side, I mean, we, um, both of us are very empathetic, you know, because we put ourselves in each other's shoes, you know. If uh, she were here, she would do this. If I were there, I would do that. And if not, we, uh, over the phone or whatever, Zoom, 
uh, WhatsApp, we discuss things and get things done just to uh, suit uh, what we are, just to suit our expectations. And that's uh, a good thing. All right. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for coming onto the podcast, both of you. It's been a pleasure. Um, I know it took us a while to get here, but we made it work. And it's it's um, very exciting to see um, someone being married for 43 years and still um, having these words of wisdom to, to input into other people. So thank you so much for coming on and inspiring other people um, with your love journey um, so I just want to say a big big thank you and also um, if people wanted to reach out to you where could they reach out or find you oh, all right. well, okay. they, they, they know you they know you they can come to you and you uh, come to us so that's, that be. for now they can you know come through you you know so yeah we decide on maybe starting something up to you know to to be chatting with people or helping people through that means so yeah they can come through you for now dion okay okay yeah. and we will we'll try and set something up as you heard guys if you have any questions any queries or anything that you would like to ask my mom and dad just come through me if you come through the lovelands podcast um Instagram page, Facebook page, wherever you find us everywhere, just come through there and I will direct your questions to them um, and, and get you a channel so that you can actually have a conversation if you need to. But um, thank you so much for coming guys. And that is our very last couple um, episode for Love Learns Long, Le Long Distance Relationships. So thank you guys. And you thank you for having us. You. Dion, thank you too for inviting us, even as the <coughs> sorry, <coughs> giving us the opportunity, you know, to to um, join you on this your um, this mission that you have started, and um, you are doing a good job. Keep it up. Thank you. And we wish you all the best, and we hope that we will still be able, we will be able to, you know, um, help you more anytime you need us on your podcast just let us know and then we will we will join you so yes thank you thank you thank, thank you, you thank you and all the best to you, all the listeners and uh, we look forward to hearing from you and uh, we are always there for you yeah thank you so much yeah. thank you. bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.